everyone. Yeah, welcome to this August edition of the Chat with Eric session. I'm very excited to have everyone of you here today. And um, I believe this session will be interesting. So every month, the last Thursday of every month, I do come, I do come on live on YouTube and answer these questions you may have. Uh, for those who are just joining for the first time, my name is Eric Okomado. I am a freelance coach, a virtual executive assistant, business support specialist, and I offer services to clients in different parts of this world. I have been on this journey for about seven years now, over six years, going to seven years now, and I've got quite some experience, uh, gotten that exposure, and, and I have a platform to mentor other persons who would like to continue on this path and end in foreign currencies. So today's edition would be like every other edition that we've had. I'll give room to every one of you. You can type your questions in the comment section and I will take your questions one at a time. This session will last for one hour. So by 8 p.m. Nigeria time, the session will be over. I'm excited to see you, Joyce. I'm excited to see you, Janet. Good to have you here. Samuel, I see you. Praise Benjamin. It's good to have you here. Really excited to have you here. I know you guys are hot burning, and uh, I know very soon you'll be testifying of uh, the good things you are doing and the places where you are making impact. Good to see you, Faith. You're welcome. Ah, I see going there. You are welcome also. Every one of you, you are welcome. So just before you start uh, bringing in your questions, I have some questions I've received. I'm just going to answer one or two of these questions. And thereafter, I would give room for you to ask a question. In the meantime, you can drop your questions. I will take them one at a time. So I have several questions that people have asked before and i will be answering these questions the first one is where can i find clients as a freelancer so today earlier today i was in a conference seminar uh, slash exhibition the total yeah. school support uh seminar is uh, and exhibition toast here in lagos and i was just thinking about yeah. Uh, people generally who do some other things, they are more creative, sort of, compared to those persons who are involved in legitimate uh, business. You see, people generally, they look for clients where they find or where they can find these clients. So really, it is not just on a freelance platform. You, the question is, where can I find clients? not necessarily on the freelance platform. Many persons, freelancers, find it difficult because they are focusing on the client, not focusing so much on the value, not focusing so much on the need. They are looking for someone who will employ them and start paying them in dollars. And if you, are, if you approach freelancing from that paradigm, you will really find it difficult. And it will be very difficult for you to come to the realization as to their clients everywhere. But when you approach it from a point of value, so today at a conference, there was a man I really wanted to speak with. I don't just know why, but I wanted to speak to him. I liked everything about him. And I wanted to speak with him for a possibility of a business with him. But some, uh, I got distracted. I was busy talking to other persons. But before I know it, the man overheard me speaking with some other persons. And he got interested. And he was like, can I talk to you? And uh, my team member uh, just introduced us and we started talking. So what I learned from that experience is the man did not desire to speak to me because he liked the way I looked. The man rather spoke to me because he overheard my conversation with other persons while I was trying to sell a product. And he got interested because of the value 
of what I was selling. So if you are a freelancer and you approach it from a point of value, you will find clients everywhere. So these days when I train, I tell people that it is good to start to earn in dollars, but you have to try out what you have learned using your environment, offering value. I was speaking with someone a while ago and I told the person, rather than complain about this situation, approach it with a solution. And it is better to get to that table of conversation with a solution and that solution became become a, a basis for your conflict resolution. You want to resolve a conflict. A problem led to that conflict. Rather than just go to that discussion table and start quarreling and talking, disagreeing, you can go with a solution. You look at the solution together and eventually when you are resolving that conflict, you are resolving it on the basis of the solution you have so provided. So freelancers are everywhere, folks. Uh, sorry, clients for freelancers are everywhere and you can reach them. First, get a profile. Get a profile that could be on LinkedIn, it could be on Upwork, it could be, be on Fiverr, Glassdoor, Toptal. There are several freelancing platforms. Some you have to pay a fee, some you don't have to pay anything. Get a platform there. When you are done getting a, uh, get a, get a profile, when you are done getting a profile in these platforms, get curate a very beautiful portfolio for yourself and start reaching out to people. Reach out to them wherever you find them. Reach out to them on LinkedIn. Reach out to them on social media. Go and do a research based on your value proposition. Now you have a set of skills. Who and who will find this your skill relevant to their situation? Okay, for example, you are a graphics designer. For example, you are a virtual executive assistant. For example, you are a content manager. Where will you find people who are interested in your skill? Do your research. Research a set of websites where you know these people will require your skills. You can even spot some problems with the website when you are researching. And that becomes the basis for discussion. I was searching for this the other day. I stumbled upon your website. I got interested in some of the things you are doing. While going through, I saw that your value proposition is indeed amazing. But I saw this, 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 and this with what you are doing at the moment. Are you available for a 30 minutes conversation, a 15 minutes discussion over Zoom? Come on, you are, you are talking to someone already. And before you know it, this person will be willing like, what am I not doing right? Let me tell you, every company, every individual in business is looking for a way to do things better. Nobody, nobody is going into business just to look good. The goal is profit maximization. And whenever they see someone that can make their product better, their services better, and their brand image better, see, they are ready to have a conversation. So you point out the problem, you demystify the problem and you keep the solution to yourself until you have that discussion. But make the person know that you have the solution. So don't be limited by uh, a particular freelance platform. I know some persons complain, uh, Fiverr is very competitive, very competitive. Usually when I talk to people, don't discuss so much about the problem. Ask yourself, why is Fiverr not competitive? And what can I do differently to differentiate myself from the pack? Upwork is difficult, some people say. Why is Upwork difficult? What can I do to differentiate myself from the pack? For example, as simple as having an introduction video on Upwork, some persons have accounts for many years did not have introduction video. I am guilty. I don't really need an introduction video to sell myself because my profile is indeed looks good. But if you are just coming to the platform, see, you need to do everything you have to do to get ahead of the competition. You are competing with Eric, for example, that has about six, seven years experience on that platform. So you look at my profile, Eric does not have an introduction video. How about I do a 
very amazing introduction video. So when someone sees the video, before he plays it, he's already attracted to what, the way I look, and the prospect of what I want to see. He watches it like, let me interview this guy. Let me interview this lady. So there are clients everywhere, folks. Freelancers, there are clients everywhere. There is markets everywhere. Don't be limited by where you are. The world is your stage. From that point, you realize that. Don't be limited. If you try today, you did not get a client. Try again tomorrow. If you try here, you did not win a deal. Try here tomorrow. Just don't relax. Just don't quit. It won't be long. You will close a deal. There are people looking for solutions. That's that for the first, because I know it's very, it's a pain point. I have to address that. I see a lot of persons tell me these days, Eric, it's not easy. It's not easy. I've been trying. I've not gotten any client. That is why I have to uh, go all that length trying to tell you that the clients are everywhere. So this is another question I've gotten. Uh, someone asked, what and what should I include in my portfolio? You know, the last video I did, that was last Thursday, I spoke on portfolio. If you have not watched it, please, after this session, I encourage you to check the playlist Freelance to Freedom and watch that video. Uh, portfolio, what should I include? So I would have to go over it again. Now, what's your portfolio? Your portfolio is your pack of experience. That's not how I defined it, but this is another way to put it. Is your pack of experience that you are showing to your potential clients that you are competent to take on a potential job. So what is included is the list of your best jobs and a snippet of these jobs. So what should you include if you are into branding? If you call yourself a branding expert, a digital marketer, beyond the name, what can you tell us in your portfolio? If you call yourself a UI UX designer, beyond the title, what can you tell us? So ideally, if you tell me that you are into branding, your portfolio should include the cards you've designed for people, the logos you've created for people, everything that has to do with branding that you have done. So you are going to state what you did, when you did it, who you did it for, the skills you used to execute it, the duration it took, and more importantly, very importantly, a snippet of your work. So if you are designing, for example, you need to have a screenshot of the logos you've designed. If you created a website, for example, you need to have a screenshot of the website you have created. So when a potential client is going through your profile on Upwork, what he or she sees is not just your title. I'm a graphic designer. I'm a web developer. I'm a UI UX designer. He sees beyond that. He sees something you have done. Possibly you can add the link to this website if you've created a website, for example, to your portfolio. You can include link to your portfolio. If you are a video editor, you have edited some badass videos, some very amazing videos. Are they on YouTube? If yes, very interesting. You can include the link to this video. Have a screenshot of this YouTube video and you are able to market this to uh, your client. When they see this, this is how it works. I have been a recruiter also. I, as part of my work, I have recruited for one or two companies, a few companies. And when you are trying to recruit, you see the profile of the person, but you can't tell whether the person has the ability to do the task you need him or her for. 
why the profile may be con convincing there's this shroud of authenticity there are some persons that their, that their profile says so well or speak some beautiful things about but when you try them you see that they are very shallow why some persons who may be lazy in terms of their profile but when you get close to them and you engage them you eventually you you eventually see that they have debt what your portfolio does it it speaks for you when you are not there so beyond looking at the profile when you see the portfolio i see the solution i'm trying to implement in my company and i see that you have done something like that before through your portfolio i click on the link perhaps i'm trying to build a website that maybe I may, I may want to use uh wordpress or i may even have a website and i want to see that it is integrated with woocommerce i'm able to uh get uh, uh people to pay on the website and i see you have created a website it becomes so interesting going through what you have done i reach a decision immediately that come on this is what i'm looking for no need to search any longer so include those things that are necessary to sell you when you are not physically there. If you go to my profile on Upwork, you will find out that I have some things in my portfolio. Most times I forget to update. I was thinking I should update my portfolio uh, soon because I have so many things I have learned. I have some skis that I, I, now, I have some skis that I can sell so i think i should update that with the things i've done so that i can attract more clients uh to myself and i encourage you to do that as well so that's the question for uh portfolio i have quite a number of persons here what questions do you have that you would like to ask me you have this opportunity once in a month to chat with me <laughs> directly uh, the other Thursdays, I post videos that are relevant to you. But for this, you tell me this is what I want to learn right now. So you can just type your question in the comment section. I will take them one at a time. While I'm waiting for you to type that, I will just answer one other question I've received in the course of the month. How do I set my rate as a freelancer? I think I got this question uh, early this week also. People are very interested when it gets to money. First, don't think people will value you when you sell yourself cheap. Just get that. So persons think the cheaper, the better. People don't exactly buy things because they are cheap. People buy things because of the inherent value, not because they are cheap. If you want to sell a bunch of banana for me, in as much as I like banana, I won't buy the banana cheap not just because. I won't buy the banana cheap not minding the quality of the banana. First thing I want to ensure is that the banana is not rotten. If it is rotten and you are telling me this, you can get this bunch for 50 naira. It's small thing, it's chicken change, but I won't, I won't pay that. So how do you set your rate? Set your rate on the basis of the value you offer. That's the first thing you need to consider. What value do you offer? The second thing is what rate does that value command in the market there's a market price for every skill for every product for every service that's we call it the equilibrium market price so how do you know that it may differ from platform to platform do a simple research what is the average rate a virtual assistant and on up you are going to see results try to know the lowest and the highest. Now, honestly, ask, honestly assess yourself, your ability, your skills, and generally the value you are offering. Then take a rate 
that is competitive based on your level of experience. So I can't tell you, for example, that if you are starting out, start with $5 or start with $7 or start with $8. I was I once consulted for some guys who are in leadership position in a bank I would I would leave unnamed. When I was asking them about their skills, their certification, I was wowed. One of them is a fellow chartered accountant. While I could advise someone, perhaps a university undergraduate or a high school graduate, to take $5 for a start or $7, I can't ask someone who is a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Accountants to take that amount of money. Rather, my line of thinking was beyond Nigeria accounting, what other skills, what other certification do you have? I advise him to go and learn how to use QuickBook by Intuit. I advise him to learn how to use Z uh, Zero CROM. Things relating to accounting that are relevant beyond the Nigeria economy or the Nigeria business space so that he could leverage his growth in the banking and the finance sector together with the skills he has to deploy some skills that are already implementable or have been implemented in other climbs and fix a good rate. If that man uses my counsel, he could start with a rate of between 25 to $35 per hour. And he will earn more than that. He could earn up to $50 per hour. If you understand, for example, the uh, way uh, Canada financial system works, if you understand, for example, the way the American taxation system works and is consulting based on his level of experience. So that is it. There is no fixed way to fix a price. There is no fixed way. So generally, fix based on the value you are offering in the market space. Fix based on the value of that your skill in the market. And try to know the lowest, try to know the highest, be honest with yourself and go for it. So I don't know if anyone has any question. I have several questions people have asked. I could go over them uh, and just speak on this, but I usually enjoy it when people who are live, there is the benefit for being live right now. So uh, the benefit for joining me live is so that you have the opportunity to ask your questions and i attend to it others who are seeing your questions here they can benefit from it as well while i'm responding to you i see uh friday obong has asked that i record this don't worry you'll see this on youtube even when this session is done that's the beautiful thing yeah you will see it so chinedo abua so one of the challenges I face most of the time is poor time management. As an expert in the field of freelancing, what will you advise I do? Generally, when I train people, I focus more on character modulation, even before I go into the skills, the technical skills. I go into the things they need to know and how they need to deploy these skills to offer quality service to their clients everywhere in the world. You see, most times we are poor because of some habits that are detrimental to our progress in life. One of such is procrastination. When we talk about time management, you don't actually manage time. It just flows. Whether you like it or not, <laughs> the end of the clock will move. You may remove the battery, but the time is still moving. So we manage ourselves in time, knowing that we don't have all the time in this world. We manage ourselves. We manage our schedules. We manage our activities within 
the 24 hours we have each day. And most times we don't do so well in that management because first, we have not taken inventory of what our task are and how best we can go about executing them. So that is a major problem for many persons. When we take inventory of our task, knowing that, okay, I have this, 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 this to do. What is the time requirement for this task currently? When you start out, you make some mistakes. For example, I assume that I want to be writing. I do write at times. I have some projects I'm working on. And on my Google Calendar, I just put there, write for one hour. Most times, I see 45 minutes, I actually just start, got started. That is when the flow begins. And when I'm not when I'm not in that mood, it doesn't make sense for me to stop the flow just because it is one hour. Ideas are pouring in. I will start writing and writing. Before you know, I have done two hours. By doing two hours, the activity I scheduled just after that writing has been shifted. So what do I do the next week when I have that writing session? I'll tell myself, Eric, one hour is obviously not enough. You are going to take two hours or two hours, 30 minutes for this learning, for this writing. So when you start out, you may not really, be, you may not really make perfect uh, decisions. But over time, as you reiterate, you correct yourself, readjust your schedules. Before you know it, you have uh, the right time estimate of the time requirement for each of these tasks. Have a plan. When it is not written down, you just do this haphazardly. Now, I have seen from experience and from people I have discussed with that people who wake up in the morning and kind of write down their to-do list, the task they have for today, they are more effective and have better sense of accomplishment because you see what you have been able to achieve on, you see what you have been able to achieve that, that very day. So generally, have your to-do list. It may not be in a book, it may be in your phone, just have them in place and try as much as possible to access yourself. That is the last thing I want to speak on in terms of time management. So people don't assess themselves. You wrote your to-do list. In the evening, ask yourself, how far did I go? You wrote a plan for the week. At the end of the week, ask yourself, how far did I go? Okay, what did I miss? Why was I not effective here? What was the mistake? When you do this, you are able to learn from your mistakes, correct yourself, and do things better in the future. Over time, you see you are getting more effective. You are managing your time better and you can achieve more results. One of the things I would um, encourage you, one of the things I want to encourage you to uh, look at, uh, I do this uh, in my training, is in our prioritization metrics. So, I just typed that, check this out and um, design that matrix for yourself. Use that to gauge the things competing for your time. Most times the things we give into the frivolities. Usually my approach is when something does not have long-term implication on my goals, there is no impact or benefit of a particular thing to my goal or what I'm pursuing at the moment, I just cancel it. That is a frivolity. It has no importance. I don't give it attention. So when you prioritize, you're able to manage your time. Well, because if you don't prioritize, you may be busy all day. And in the end, you find out you did not really achieve anything. So I hope that addressed your question, uh, Chinedu. So I have a question from Janet. 
Kenneth is saying that uh, she saw a data entry vacancy today, but one of the major requirements is experience in desktop uh, publishing, DTP. Please, do you think it is okay to start learning DTP? Richard Bronson, the British billionaire, said, when you see a very amazing opportunity and you do not know and you do not know so well about it, accept the opportunity. Don't say I can't. <laughs> accept it, then go and learn about it. So if I were you, Janet, I look at this vacancy, it's very interesting. What I would do, you have Google. Google is always your friend. Uh, I don't know why. I believe you are rephrasing your question. Two persons just retracted their question. You can ask it. There is no foolish question here. Please ask your question. Be free. So I was saying um, what I would do. First, I'll Google what does desktop publishing entails. So I know what it entails. I would simulate it. I have about six to seven email accounts. Some are company accounts. So for companies I work for, they usually give me um, email addresses that I use. Why for personal accounts, I think I have about four, four email addresses. So what I do at times when I learn a new skill, how to use a new platform, a new system, be it a CROM, a productivity tool, what I do, I simulate it. I would invite Eric 1, Eric 2, Eric 3 to the platform, assign tax to Eric 1, Eric 2, Eric 3, and see how it works beyond the YouTube videos I worked. So I do a lot with this, simulating it. With that, I am gathering experience, different use case, so that when I'm discussing with a client, I don't just say, okay, I've seen it. Truly, I've used it. I've not used it for an organization. I'll be candid with you. I've not used it for an organization, but I've deployed it for a personal uh, personal use before. I've, and I will tell you the use case that I've used it for. And this is what you can do in less than two days. So, Janet, if you like the opportunity, go for it. <laughs> go for it. But you have to put in the work. The invite, I say, if you are not ready to do the work, this space is not for you. This space is not for you if you are not ready to put in the work. I believe work will not kill you. It makes you better. Once you are in, I'm here to guide you. Excuse me. So I have a question here from MPIN and Co. It's no prioritization metrics applicable to daily tasks or it could be used for weekly or monthly tasks it's not so much for task it's a matrix that guides you in decision making especially prioritization so what you do ideally when you use the asinoa prioritization matrix excuse me it has four quadrants there is one that is urgent and not important. There is other quadrants where you have the not urgent and important. You have the important, the you have not urgent, not important, urgent, important, urgent not important and uh not urgent but important generally things that are not important but are urgent they are things that would just come like someone is calling you just for a chat or to go out to hang out with some friends, and they say this evening. Now, for some persons, that may be mean a lot. If someone is battling with depression, 
and needs to go out there to hang out to feel better, that becomes important. But for me, to be very sincere, that is not important. But the person is saying, Eric, come right now. There's a sense of urgency. Should I go for that? It's not my priority. So that's where OR come in. So what you do with the matrix, not just for your daily tasks, you can plug in your daily and your weekly tasks to it. But the way the matrix is designed is for you to understand that some activities that are not even in your plans will come in. You may not have seen them, but with the matrix, you are able to gauge. Like I just told you, someone just called me Eric Less Anger. I'm going to gauge it based on my prioritization matrix. The part that leads to your development, that leads to, that will determine where you'll be in the next five years, in the next 10 years. It's that part that is very important, but not urgent. Like for some of you, you want to do a course to own your skills or to equip you for a role in the future. But because nobody is pushing you, nobody is tying a rope to your neck to drag you to take that course. Some of you have even registered. Though. Some of you have registered. You have some online courses you have bought. Some of you, you have registered for some free ones. But from that day you watch the first video, you've not gone back five months ago, you've not gone back. Please return back. Things like these courses you have to learn online, they are very important, but they are not urgent. So you see, eventually you procrastinate. Why some things that are not important are not urgent? There's no need, you just forget about it. Others that are urgent, but not important, you could just delegate them. But there are some you have to take care of. So just try to check the matrix. It has four quadrants. It's a basis for decision making, not so much about your daily task, weekly tasks. But you can plug them, like mentally. These are the tasks I have for today, which are urgent, which are uh, important. And you gauge them before you take a decision. So that's that uh, MPIN and CO. That's uh, the response to your question. So I have Sandra. Uh, Sandra says she's glad to be here. Glad to have you, Sandra. So Samuel is asking, I have a dormant Opoc account with unused connect. Also, my account is appearing unavailable. What can I do? Samuel, I think the problem you have, you went to sing Davido's song that you are unavailable. So you have to tell Upwork, please, it might be no, I am not available. So that was on the lighter side. I know after this session, you go and dust that your Upwork account has been dormant. But here is a tip for you. Don't start by applying for jobs. I have some videos in this playlist, Freelance to Freedom, where I spoke on how to have a top rated profile. There are videos I spoke on how to have create good portfolios. If you've not seen those videos somewhere, please take some time, watch those videos. I have a video also I did on proposals. The way we send proposal three, four, five years ago is not the way we send proposals now. The market is not competitive. There is a paradox of choice. The more clients have more persons to choose from, it takes longer time for them to reach a decision as to who to employ. And because of that, they play around looking for the best. So you need to be creative in the way you write your proposals to win contracts on our book now. So I did a video on proposal also. Just check the playlist, you will see that. Now, when you have watched this video, and this applies to every one of you who is here watching live, when you have done this, go to that your profile on Opoc you have left dormant. Dust it carefully by putting the things you have to put. Some of us have certifications that before now, there's no way you can link it to Opoc. Now, Upwork accepts your different certification, but they will fall into this category, into these two categories, verified certifications. 
and unverified. The verified ones, they are the ones that uh, they kind of have a partnership, this certification body with Upwork. So when you go to certification, you see them in the list of Upwork certification. One of them is the inbound certification by Upspot Academy. So when you do that certification and you link that to Upwork, you will see it is verified because Upwork has a way of getting in touch with Upspot to ensure that you truly completed that course and that certificate is verified. The other way to get your certificate verified is when your certificates are coming from Credly. If they are Credly verified, you can integrate them to your Upwork because there is this Upwork Credly in, uh, integration. So you can bring those certification you have, you have done with Udacity, certification you have done with Udemy, certification you have done with Coursera, just name it. You cannot bring them to Upwork. Have that in your certification uh, portion. What you're actually doing, you are bringing juice from your other uh, parts of your profile, not on Upwork, to Upwork to sell yourself better. So when you have these in place, uh, Samuel, then you start to work on algorithm. Algorithm really is not what the teachers matching process it is how people react and for there to be algorithm you must feed the system with a message how do you start to work on the algorithm when you start applying on upwork initially it looks as if people are not looking your way but after some time you start seeing people looking in your direction what is happening from the day you start applying that was why upwork automatically don't take someone switch your profile from available to unavailable after some time of not using your account, Upwork will just filter it with their system. It is just there. They will just filter it. It is automatic. Anyone who has not used his account for three or six months, there is a message that has been fed to the system. This account switch to unavailable. So you give space to people who are actively looking for job. So when you do that, uh, to switch your account, your account back to public, chat Upwork support. There's a place where you can actually demand for this. But the quickest way is to chat Upwork support and they will switch it back to public. When you start applying for jobs constantly, what happens? You are actually sending a message to the Upwork algorithm. I am available. I am looking for a job. The more you apply, the more your profile will be viewed and the more the better the chances of getting a job. How do you know you are doing the right thing? Check your stats. When you start applying for a job, you see your graph gro growing. How people are looking at your application. How people are coming to see your profile. So try that, and I, I think you have a better experience. I wish you the very best, Samuel. I want to hear testimony in the, in the next chapteric session that you've gotten a, a, a contract on Upwork, and uh, you are all smiling. I see some of your work. I'm amazed. I think you should be out there selling and earning some good money for yourself. So I wish you the best. Uh, I have a question for, I have a question from Siphon. A moment. Please, could you give a practical example of a unique selling point that could, dif that could differentiate one from others? Maybe tell us what yours was. All right. So I'm a virtual assistant. And one of the things I've seen about many assistants, uh, virtual assistants generally think that, OK, my client has a lot of work. And uh, that is why the person is not effective. The person is always tired. So as a virtual assistant, I'll be doing some of this job. So, madam, tell me what to do. I'll carry your bag. But for me, I am not just a virtual assistant that do the things you want me to do so as to feel better. My unique selling point is within the first two weeks, I study your workflow. I study your company. I come with a solution that goes beyond what you have even envisaged. 
I look at leakages. I look at faulty systems. I create new ones. I look at how you are filing documents, employee record, and create new ones. Now, let me give you an example. I work for a studio, and as the executive assistant to the our founder and president, I'm the one that interface with people who are designing graphic designer, video editors, and all that. We had a situation where one of our staff went a wall, and we could not reach him for days. Tried Slack, no way. Tried email, no way. Tried phone number, we could not. It was confusing. Ah. Uh, my boss was like, we did our best. We could just realize if he doesn't come, ah, that was his loss. But you know what I did? I created an employee management system because of that. And my boss was wild. So I had to envisage that situation that this, we not just end with this particular employee. Going forward, in our on-body session, which I do, there are basic questions, there are forms that this person will fill. There will be a place for, in case of emergency, who do we contact? In case you are unavailable, who do we reach out to? So we know. Because we found out later that that guy was sick and was hospitalized, and we knew nothing about the situation. He was at the verge of losing his job when we found out. We have even employed someone for his role when he came in. So my boss just gave him something something else to do. So uh, I want you, uh, Sifo and everyone, to look at the service you offer, the value you offer to clients. Look at what people are doing and ask yourself, what can I do better? Because it is on the back of innovation that you can fly to that altitude you really want to get to. And innovation is not just talking about uh, one technology you want to deploy. Innovation basically is doing things differently to achieve better results. It may be with technology or without technology. So that basically is what you are offering. For a content writer, because I know you are into content writing and all that, you could differentiate yourself, not just as a content writer, as a curator of content. You can go for the juggler in a world of artificial intelligence, in a world where chat GPT, we churn out articles of 5,000 words within split seconds. People are wondering whether there is still a place for writers. People are wondering whether there is still a place for content manager. Folks like me, I'm unfazed with this because there is something I do to your contents. Whether those you've gotten from chat GPT or those that have been written by good writers, I give a touch to your content that machines cannot. I give a touch to your content that transform your content and appeals so much to your readers, inspires them and gets them to take the decision you want them to take. The person may not know what you are doing, but the person wants to talk to you to know what you are doing. So I cannot write your unique selling point for you. What makes your unique selling point unique is the ability to differentiate you from others. So for you to get that unique selling point, you must answer one fundamental question, which is what am I doing differently from others that make my service five times, 10 times, 20 times better than others in the market? If you don't have an answer to that question, you don't have a unique selling point. So 
this is a counsel to everyone start rethinking the services you offer start thinking carefully what you can do differently and develop yourself in that light virtual executive assistants before now what they just they just wait for someone to tell them what to do these are the list of things i want you to do my calendar every day manage my calendar and all that this that that some of the solutions that you come with we even reduce your work hour and that may mean the the uh unwise way to think about it is it will reduce your any it wouldn't when you start developing solutions that makes life easy for you and for your employer, immediately the trigger you send, send to your employer's brain is that this is someone that should be on my side every time. So your employer sees you as the fixer. Everything, it gets to a point that your employer gets so dependent on you that it feels that if anything happens and you leave him or her, is our life fall apart. See, I tell you, once you get to that point in your client freelancer relationship, you have hit gold. And that is what you should aspire for. Offer services to your clients so that they feel you are indispensable when in reality, no one is indispensable. They just feel like, why should I go through the rigors of looking for someone that is like Eric when I already have Eric? Do you get it? Why should I go through the rigors of trying to get another Samuel, another Victor, when I already have this person in my team? So that is something you should look at. We have just four minutes to the end of this session. I will still take one question. So if you have a question you could just ask, I would take that question and um, We'll call it a day. If you are not part of the community already, uh, you can join. There's a link in the description section. You can join the community Freelance to Freedom, where you get information about what's going on. You have link to our videos as we release them. And you have this mentoring that is ongoing. You can benefit from. So that's it basically let me see who is asking the last question okay why i'm waiting for that i just have three minutes let me assume for those of you who have joined live these are the questions you have so one of those questions that we've received i would like to uh, speak on which is related to the last thing i spoke on is how do I build a long-term relationship with my clients? So I, I would want to tell you about an experience I had with a client. There was a time I was having a um, very short-term relationship with my clients. It's true that some jobs, really, the client would just say, I need you for three months, I need you for two weeks. But I told myself, I, I came up with a statement of purpose for myself as a freelancer. I came up with a, a profile, a goal, a strategy for myself. And one of my goals is to have a relationship with my clients for at least one year. What I go for is building a relationship for two years, like work with a client for two years because I've worked with about 66 clients now, if not more than. And I was asking myself, would it not have been better if I had stuck with one client for these years? There is the downside to that because it means you may not really be able to go out there and get other opportunities. By moving from one client to another, my rate has grown because I have uh, multiple <laughs> experience and exposure. So I told myself, however it is, I want to be working long term. And I came up with a strategy on how to go about that. One, I maintain communication. One of the ways that I 
did not do well starting out was communication. When you are stuck, there's a temptation to, let me try to do it myself. Let me try to do it myself. If I tell my client now, he would think I'm bereft of, an idea, bereft of ideas and all that. No, that's not the right way to think. Communicate. Hello, James. I promised to deliver this task within 24 hours. However, I just ran into some difficulties. I'm trying to understand this. I don't know if you have an idea if you've seen this before. This is what I'm, I'm facing at the moment. I don't know why the system is acting up, but I think there is something wrong with this platform. I'm trying to troubleshoot. I have reached out to customer support. I hope to resolve this within the next three hours and continue this task. So what you are doing is you have communicated upward. You have told your clients that there is a problem, but don't ever stop it there. I tell people, your job is not to give more task or more problem to your employer. Your job is to simplify is our life. So what I've done with this scenario is I told you, see you, there is a problem. However, I have done this, 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 that. I'm expecting a solution within this time frame. And I'm not asking you, have you faced any similar problem? Do you have a suggestion? See, that is the best way to approach it. So I mean, I'm, I, I'm running up. I manage communication, effective communication with my clients. I look at systems, look for broken parts and fix them. I keep upgrading myself and adding value. I serve as the eye for the future. If I see any change that will be beneficial to my clients, I mention it to them immediately. I make them feel and realize that I have their best interest, and sincerely, I do. And once they realize this, we are building a long-term relationship. Even if for economic reasons, they cannot retain you more than three months, more than six months, see, whenever the next opportunity comes, they, you will be the person that they will reach out to. So that's how you maintain long-term client. Folks, it's 8.01 p.m. Nigeria time. It's quite late for some persons who go to bed early. Uh, but it's been exciting having you. I could see a lot of faces, a lot of names that are familiar. I'm so excited having you all around today for this Chat with Eric session for the month of August. Next one will be uh, September, the last Thursday of the month of September. I hope to see you, and I hope before then you are putting some of these things we've said today to work so that you'll be asking me questions on, oh, I have earned this amount of money. How do I get my money in Naira? How do I receive my payment? These are the kind of questions I would like to answer in our September edition of Chat with Eric session. So go to work. There is diamond where you are standing. Uh, there's a book I recommend, Acres of Diamond. There is diamond where you are standing. So go to work, put this to work, keep applying. If they say no to the knock the door. A, a closed door is not always a locked door. Knock, knock, try to open, push. You see, you get something. There are a lot of opportunities out, out there. Every day I still get notification for job. <laughs> Every vacancies, everywhere. Most times we are either not equipped enough for this vacancy uh, or we are ignorant of, of this vacancy. The third one, we are being stupid. And I usually believe people within my network, which you are not part of the network, they are not stupid. They go out there, take on these opportunities and they uh, make some good money for themselves and impact their world. Until we see you again, do it to take care of yourself. I uh, love you all. Bye-bye.